The Russian army has increased the use of armored vehicles during assaults by small groups advancing its troops to the administrative border of the Donetsk region. This was stated by Ukrainian military analyst Dmitro Snihirov. According to Snihirov, recent weeks have been characterized by increased activity of Russian occupying forces, which are using up to 30 armored vehicles during a single assault. Previously, the enemy's tactics involved actions by small groups. However, he also noted that Russia has serious problems with armored vehicles and the ability to use such equipment will be exhausted by mid-2025. The expert believes that the Russian Federation may try to encircle Ukrainian positions in the Pokrovsk area, but does not foresee a serious breakthrough of the front to the Dnipro and Zaporizhia. Whether a Russian breakthrough is possible in the Dnipropetrovsk region or an expansion of hostilities in Zaporizhia, these are panic moods, he stated. Snihirov also pointed out that information about the squeezing out of Ukrainian forces from positions in the Kursk region is part of an informational and psychological operation by the Russian Federation. He emphasized the successful actions of the Ukrainian armed forces in recent days and the halt of the offensive in the direction of the Kursk nuclear power plant, preventing accusations of nuclear terrorism against the Ukrainian side. Recall on the front lines, Ukrainian soldiers use a graphic term to describe the Russian tactics they face daily. They call them meat assaults. Waves of Russian soldiers coming at their defensive positions, sometimes nearly a dozen times in a day. This tactic has led to staggering Russian casualties since Moscow launched its latest offensive. Those attacking are normally quickly spotted by drones above and the Russians leave their dead and wounded on the battlefield. The tactic is a sign that Russia is seeking to make the most of its key advantage. Numbers Russia benefits from a significantly larger population than Ukraine. Some of those in the assaults are former prisoners, but Russia is also able to recruit through making one-off payments, sometimes thousands of dollars. On the night before Election Day, celebrities including Oprah Winfrey and Lady Gaga turned out in force for Kamala Harris's presidential bid. Harris and Donald Trump closed out this year's presidential race with a fierce battle for Pennsylvania on Monday, making their final pitch to voters across a state that could prove decisive in the campaign for the White House. Harris ended her night in Philadelphia at the Art Museum steps made famous in the movie Rocky, where she said, the momentum is on our side. She also rallied with supporters in Allentown, Scranton and Pittsburgh, and she swung through reading to visit a Puerto Rican restaurant and do a little canvassing herself, knocking on doors alongside campaign volunteers. For more than half of this country's life, women didn't have a voice, Gaga said to the crowd in Philadelphia. Today I am holding in my heart all the tough, tenacious women who made me who I am. I cast my vote for someone who will be a president for all for all Americans. And now, Pennsylvania, it's your turn. Pennsylvania has the most electoral college votes of any battleground state, making it the top prize of the campaign. A victory there would clear a path to White House for either candidate. For more than half of this country's life, women didn't have a voice. Yet we raised children, we held our families together, we supported men as they made the decisions. But tomorrow, women will be a part of making this decision. Today, I am holding in my heart all the tough, tenacious women who made me who I am. I cast my vote for someone who will be a president for all, for all Americans. And now, Pennsylvania, it's your turn. The country is depending on you. So tomorrow, let's make sure all your voices are heard. Come on, let's go! I am here with 10 first-time voters for Philadelphia! If we don't show up tomorrow, it is entirely possible that we will not have the opportunity to ever cast a ballot again. 
And let me be very clear, if you do not make sure that the people in your life can get to the polls, that is a mistake. Deciding not to decide, that is most definitely a vote to let other people control your future. Now, all, we all know what we're voting against. So I want to end by reminding you about a few things that we're voting for. We are voting to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States. We are voting for values. We are voting for values and integrity. We are voting for the right to choose what happens to our own bodies. We are, we are voting to save ourselves from this precipice of danger where we now stand. All the anxiety and the fear you're feeling, you're feeling that because you sense the danger and you change that with your vote. We are voting for healing over hate.